Well, I've got to tell you, it was an absolute uh, pleasure, a privilege to be inside the stadium behind me to watch this game. Because quite simply, it was one of the greatest football games of all time and arguably the greatest World Cup final of all time. The only pro problem I've got is I'm out here speaking to you while Lionel Messi is inside the stadium behind me. I think he's going to lift the World Cup uh, any second now. But of course, I've got to do my job and come and speak <laughs> to you. But look, an absolute privilege uh, to be inside that stadium. I've got to tell you, two brilliant teams, two incredible players, Kylian Mbappe, Lionel Messi. It ended up being Mbappe 3, Messi 2. Uh, but of course, Di Maria scored as well. And Argentina were absolutely clinical when it came to the penalty shootout. And I think the difference was this from where I was sitting, is that Messi produced for 120 minutes. He produced in the first half, the second half, throughout extra time as well. Whereas Mbappe was very, very quiet in the first half. He only came to life late in the second half uh, when he switched from playing out wide to playing through the middle. And when Angel Di Maria had been substituted, but an incredible game, so much drama. I've got about five pages of notes that I've made about everything that was going on and all the goal scorers. But look, you said it before you came to me, this will be remembered as Lionel Messi's crowning glory. And all those people, all those people who say he's not the greatest of all time because he hasn't won the World Cup, Maradona won it, Pele won it. Well, Messi and all his supporters can turn around and say, he proved you wrong, he won 12 league titles, he won four Champions Leagues, he won seven Ballon d'Ors, he was Argentinian Player of the Year 14 times, he won the Copa America, and to cap it all, he won the World Cup as well. Previously as well, hadn't he, Carve Stolokol? He made his debut in 2005. There was a tense relationship at times with the Argentinian support. How much credit does Lionel Scaloni do for not only integrating Messi back in and getting the best out of him, but also getting a team around him that worked so hard and showed so much resolve in that final today after being pegged back on a couple of occasions? Look, he's an absolutely incredible individual, an incredible manager. Uh, some Argentina fans were unhappy when he first got the job uh, four years ago because I think he hadn't really managed at all. He'd been an assistant manager at Sevilla. He'd been the manager of the uh, Argentina under-21s. But just look at what he's done. He's won the Copa America and he's won the World Cup a year later as well. And I thought he got his tactics absolutely right this evening because when the team sheet came out a lot of people were thinking why is Angel Di Maria playing instead of Leandro uh, Paredes and it became obvious straight away because Argentina had targeted Jules Kunde. now Jules Kunde is a very very good center back but he's a makeshift right back for France and I think Argentina decided that is where we're going to attack France we're going to use Angel Di Maria that is going to be the diagonal ball that we play the whole time and while Angel Di Maria was on the pitch Argentina were totally dominant I I think France didn't even get into uh, Argentina's penalty area. They didn't have a single touch in Argentina's penalty area for the whole of the first half. So Scaloni got his tactics absolutely right. It was a masterclass uh, from the manager. And I've got to say, he is such a humble person. He is so level-headed. And he's also very, very emotional. We've seen him quite a few occasions at this World Cup, crying at the end of uh, games. He's somebody who wears his heart on his sleeve and he's been under a lot of pressure as well not just because he had to help deliver the World Cup for Lionel Messi but he had to help deliver the World Cup for the whole of Argentina we were speaking to him yesterday he said Argentinians are the best supporters in the world and if you were inside that stadium tonight you would have seen just why about 90 percent of the people inside that ground were Argentina supporters and just to think how far Argentina is away from here how many flights you've got to take to get to Qatar. You're talking about 19 hours on a plane, the amount of money these supporters have had to spend. And quite a lot of them didn't even have tickets. They've been outside, they've been uh, in the centre of Doha watching the game on TV because they just had to be here to watch Lionel Messi and Argentina win the World Cup. They've come a long way. They're expecting a, a big performance from their side today. In the media, Carver, you'll know we build up to these moments and we get accused sometimes of hyping them up when they don't deliver. 
How much did both sets of players deliver? How much did the two star men deliver? And how rare is this? You said at the start of your report there, that this felt like one of the greatest games of, of football ever. And that doesn't seem like hyperbole right now. What have we witnessed in terms of people delivering in the biggest of moments? Look, we were talking, um, you know, journalists before the game, what kind of game it was going to be. Uh, some of us thought it could be a very tactical game. Maybe Scaloni will decide to play with five at the back. Maybe he will have a special plan to deal with Mbappe. How are France going to deal with Messi? Could, be, could it be a sterile tactical game we've seen that so many times before in finals could it be goalless but look we forgot about the fact that Messi was on the pitch Mbappe was on the pitch but I think the difference was Messi showed up for the whole game Mbappe only showed up in the second half and I've got to say an incredible achievement by Kylian Mbappe uh, to score a hat-trick in a World Cup final what kind of player do you have to be uh, to do that especially when he was totally anonymous in the first half and he scored his penalty in the penalty shootout as well we were talking how difficult it is for Harry Kane psychologically to have to take two penalties uh, in uh, the World Cup in a quarter final well Kylian Mbappe made it look easy taking three in a World Cup final. So I know we were talking a lot, everyone was talking before the game, Messi versus Mbappe, Messi versus Mbappe. Uh, the managers were telling us, no, forget about that. It's not about two uh, players, two brilliant all-time great players. It's about two teams. But ultimately, this evening did end up being about two players. And at the end, it ended up being one player. It ended up being about Lionel Messi. And look, you just look at the record books. I'm one of those uh, people, you know, I've been around a lot longer than some other people when I was growing up. It was Maradona. Uh, before that, it was Pele. Uh, people, uh, older people still talk about Di Stefano as well. Then there's Johan Cruyff, there's George Best, there's Cristiano Ronaldo. What is he thinking uh, this evening? I, I forgot even to mention Ronaldo well, as think? well. But How contrasting the emotions. somebody for... my age has to now say that Lionel Messi is the greatest of all time. Probably. Well, but the narrative that is contrasting there. People will say Cristiano Ronaldo is a little bit older than Lionel Messi. Perhaps that's why he's faded before Messi. You may expect that with his, his age gap. But it's been a narrative of this tournament, hasn't it? The troubles that Ronaldo have had set against Messi finding this, this realisation and this, and this moment of truth with Argentina. Look, and it hasn't been plain sailing for Lionel Messi at this World Cup. Let's not forget, what was it, three weeks ago in their opening game of the tournament, they lost 2-1 to Saudi Arabia. I remember being on Sky Sports News and uh, presenters like you, Ed, asking me every hour, is this the biggest shock in football? Is this the biggest shock in sport? Saudi Arabia uh, beating Argentina. And what I said at the time was, I said... Remember in 1990, Italy, World Cup, Argentina, the world champions, first game, uh, they lost to Cameroon, but they still made it all the way to the final. Although on that occasion, uh, they lost to Germany in the final. So they've had to do it the hard way. Every game for Argentina at this World Cup has been a knockout game because Saudi Arabia, they lost that game. The next game uh, against Mexico, they had to win that game. Poland, they had to win that game. Australia, they had to win that game. Netherlands, they had to win that game. Croatia, they had to win that game. Tonight, they had to win that game. So it hasn't been plain sailing for Lionel Messi or Argentina. But you mentioned Cristiano Ronaldo. I think this tournament was set up for Lionel Messi. The team, his teammates, all work for him. The amount of pressing they do, the work they put in to try and win the World Cup. Incredible, even if you watch them train, the intensity they train at is totally different from other teams. And as far as Ronaldo is concerned, yes, of course, he's one of the greatest players of all time, but this was not his World Cup. Uh, he came into this World Cup under that cloud, giving that hugely controversial interview. His contract was terminated by Manchester United. Uh, he was dropped to the bench by Portugal as well. Total contrast to the kind of World Cup that Lionel Messi has had. I don't want to uh, denigrate Cristiano Ronaldo uh, or kick him when he's down. Of course, he's one of the greatest players ever. But this World Cup belongs to Lionel Messi and it belongs to Argentina.
Absolutely. And a new Messi, a leader, Carve. South American journalists of, of final thought have reflected upon the fact that this Messi, not like 2014 when Javier Mascherano was leading the team talks, this Messi has been a leader, not only in what he does, but what he says to the players, the, the focal figure he is. Yeah, I think actually he, he leads by example. If you watch him in games, uh, if you watch the games live, not on TV, you can actually spend a lot of time just focusing on Lionel Messi. And he doesn't really talk a lot. He doesn't really run a lot unless he needs to. A lot of the time he's just walking around. But one minute you're thinking to yourself, what is he doing? He's, he's not doing anything. Why is he just ambling around in the centre circle? And then immediately he gets the ball, he makes something happen. Seconds later, Argentina uh, have scored. When it comes to his leadership qualities, I think he leads by example. He leads by his aura, just because of what he has achieved in the game. He is he's a, he's an icon of Argentina. You can only guess at what it feels like for some of these young Argentinian players to play with a legend like Lionel Messi. One final point I would make as well is if you look at Argentina's starting 11, all their players play outside Argentina. They play in Europe. All these players, they've had to leave home at a very young age. They've had to cross the Atlantic, come to Europe, try and make a career for themselves as footballers and this has been their ultimate prize. Quite an incredible story for Argentina to win this World Cup in the way that they have and for Lionel Messi to finally lift this trophy. Especially if you think it's hard being an England fan, imagine what it's like being an Argentinian fan. I think it's been something like 36 years of hurt. Three World Cup finals that they've lost on the spin everything that they've had to put up with, the fact that all their best players leave Argentina and go and play uh, in Europe, and the fact that people have kept saying, yeah, well, Messi's a great player, he's a great player, but the greatest of all time. No, he's got to win the World Cup. Well, all those Argentinians have shut the rest of the world up tonight, including me, because Lionel Messi has done it. Surely now, we have to admit, he is the greatest footballer ever. With apologies to Diego Maradona, and Pele, and Alfredo Di Stefano, and George Best, and Johan Cruyff, and Cristiano Ronaldo, <laughs> and all. There's been a lot of good ones, Carve Solicol. We appreciate that summary. We appreciate you tearing yourself away from that moment as well.